So um, let's recap, recap what we know about concavity and inflection points. So we already know that if uh, the second derivative uh, is positive, then what, it, what does that tell us about uh, the function? Uh, you're thinking of the second derivative test. Yeah, yeah. Right, so, but we're just talking in general. So the second derivative, so if, and then if the second derivative uh, is less than zero, then f of x is concave down. Um, okay, so if, and then also if f is uh, continuous at uh, point say x equals c um, and the concavity uh, changes at um, c then the point c comma f of c is called what is that called Flexion point, that is right. Okay, all right, so um, <clears throat> let's do a, a, a simple example. So we'll do a simple example just about concavity uh, so that we can do uh, more complete examples with uh, more, more challenging functions. So let's just take a simple function. Uh, how about, uh, let's see here, um, what was I gonna do? I had one here. Um, okay, let's do uh, x plus sine of x. And let's say you want to find the uh, intervals of uh, concavity and inflection points. Okay, um, so actually, let me let me do this on a new page, please. Let's make sure we have enough room. So x plus sine of x. All right. So um, what are we going to do? So basically, that we're going to do roughly the same exact thing we did for the intervals of increase and decrease and local extrema, except that instead of doing it with the first derivative, you're doing it with the second derivative. So that's the only difference. So um, so what should we do uh, first? Well, let's find the first derivative, right? Because to find the second, you need to find the first. So what is the first derivative? Okay, so one plus cosine of x. Okay, now uh, to find the inflection points, do I need to know the critical points? No. You actually don't, right? So notice there's nothing in there about the first derivative or anything about increase, decrease. So you don't really need it. Now, uh, generally, since you're typically analyzing the whole function, you're going to want to find them anyways. But for this example, uh, just to keep it specific to inflection points, we're just going to skip uh, critical points altogether. So uh, we'll find the second derivative, which we do need. So, um, so what is that? Negative sine x. Negative sine x. Okay, all right, so the first thing you want to do once you um, find the second derivative, which is right here, um, you want to find what are called pips. Now, what are pips? Pips are possible inflection points. Possible inflection points. All right, so where are the possible uh, inflection points? Well, um, this is a, a pretty simple one, but basically what you want to do is you want to, just like when you find critical points, um, you want to set it equal to zero, and then you want to find where it does not exist. Um, now, if the second derivative does not exist, okay, so this is important. All right, you guys pay attention. Okay, let's say 
second derivative at a point does not exist. Okay. Now, is it possible then for the first derivative to exist? Generally, no, because unless you define it in a very weird way. But, um, but for what we're talking about, so if the second derivative um, doesn't exist, then the first derivative also won't exist. Why is that? Can you guys tell me why? Or think of it from the first derivative to the function. If the first derivative doesn't exist, what do we call that? It's not differentiable, right? So if it's not differentiable, can it be continuous? So if it's not differentiable, can it be continuous? Okay. All right. Okay. All right. So, uh, Okay, maybe we're not quite yet ready yet. Okay, so let's. <laughs> okay, so basically, find where the second derivative is zero, or, uh, or. Uh, mm, maybe right. Let's write it right here. So second derivative equal to zero or does not exist. So very similar to the critical point, right? Now sine of x, uh, it's continuous everywhere, so uh, we don't have to worry about it. Um, so we'll just set it equal to zero and solve for it. So what do you say? What are the, the solutions to this sine of x equaling to zero? What is it? So, yeah, so if you just kind of list them, you would have zero, right? And then pi and then two pi and three pi and so on, right? Uh, and it's plus or minus, right? Um, so the way we typically write it is k pi, where k is, what's the funny looking z? What is that? Integer. Integer. Okay, good. All right. So notice um, how many pips do I have? I have infinitely many pips. Uh, but it's going to be periodic, so we're not. it's not a big deal, right? So when we... Uh, even though we have infinitely many, that doesn't mean that we need to test infinitely many points. Uh, it just means that it's going to follow a pattern because it's periodic. So, okay, now um, what are we going to do next? Well, once you've found the pips, then you're going to test uh, the concavity around the pips. Uh, so then you're going to do your number line business here. Uh, so, so obviously I can't put down infinitely many pips, right? So how many do you guys think we should uh, put down if, if we're... Three. So let's put zero because that's a good one, right? And then... So how do I know how many to actually put down? I mean, I could put zero, because let's say I could put zero pi, two pi, three pi, four pi, five pi, six pi. Do I, but do I really need that many? One, you need one cycle, right? So, okay, so if we look at this function, uh, what is, um, what's the period? It's two pi, right? So that's how much, that's how, how long your interval needs to be that you test around, okay? So does that make sense? Um, all right, so you wanna be mindful of that. So let's do zero pi, two pi, and then we can test in there. Does that sound good? Okay, so let's see. Uh, what would be some good test points? Well, we're going to plug it into sine, so. Uh, pi over 2 is a little bit easier, right? I mean, pi over 4 is fine, but pi over 2 is a little bit easier to plug in. Uh, we can do pi over 2. How about 3 pi over 2? 
and then 5 pi over 2. Okay, um, and then where am I going to plug those into? Do I plug it into the function, the first derivative, or the second derivative? Second derivative. Second derivative. Why the second? I'm looking, yeah, I'm looking for concavity. Okay, good. All right, so we have second derivative at minus pi over 2. Pi over 2. 3 pi over 2. And 5 pi over 2. All right, so what is minus sign of minus pi over 2? It's going to be positive 1, right? Uh, what about minus sign of pi over 2? Negative 1, good. And then 3 pi over 2, 1 again, and then negative 1, right? Okay. So then what does this mean? This means that it's going to be concave up, right? then concave down, concave up, and concave down. So if I put this over here on my number line, so this is concave up, concave down, concave up, and concave down. Uh, so then what does that mean about uh, these points right here? So I have an inflection points. I have one at zero. I have one at pi. And I have one at two pi. Okay, now you have to be a little bit careful. Um, so those are the x values, right? Uh, but the one thing that you have to be careful with is make sure that the function is defined there. So. Um, so I would recommend always, even if the question only asks for the x value, find the y value as well, because if it's not defined, for example, you could have um, you could have the concavity change and have it be a vertical asymptote, right? So like it could be concave up and then concave down, but that's not an inflection point because the function is not defined at the vertical asymptote. Does that make sense? Um, so you do have to be a little bit careful, uh, but this one is defined. So what is y here? If I plug in zero, what would I get? Zero. Uh, what about at pi? Uh, excellent question. Where am I playing it into? I'm playing it into the original, right? Why? I'm looking for the y value, exactly. So notice this one is not zero, it's pi, right? Because the original function is x plus sine of x. So sine of pi is 0, but it's x plus sine of x. So, uh, And then what about at 2 pi? 2 pi. OK, so I found three inflection points. But really, how many inflection points are there? Yeah, there's infinitely many, right? So this we really just did to find the pattern, right? So this keeps going. Um, so why don't we write it in general? So in general, um, there are inflection points at, so what, how would I write it in general? K pi, right? Good. And then what is y? It's also k pi, right? Notice, because you plug in k pi, you get k pi again every time, right? For k, where k is an integer, right? Does that make sense? Yeah? Okay, so questions on that. No? That's all right. Okay. 
for sure. Positive. So when you combine putting so it's like one function is a new action plus the like set on to each other. Right. Yeah. So that's when it gets a little bit more confusing, right? Because you have to make sure that it, you keep everything straight. So that's what we're gonna move into next. So let's do that.